Good morning, children. Today we are discussing the second chapter in our biology part, that is, microorganisms, friend and foe. So we have studied about organisms, living organisms, and we learned that living organisms are of basically two kinds: they are plants and animals. So apart from these two plants and animals there are other kind of organisms which we cannot see with our naked eye because they are of very small size. We call such small organisms as microorganisms. Micro in the sense very small. So where do we find these structures? We see the microorganism sometimes in our house itself in your kitchen itself. If you see a spoiled bread, if any bread piece is moistened and it is kept aside for few days, you can find some grayish patches on the bread slice. The grayish patch, it consists of so many small dot-like structures, powder-like structures, filament-like structures. Of course, you may not be able to see that the filament-like structure with your naked eye. But you can take help of a magnifying glass. If you have a magnifying glass, you can see that the small structures that are grown on the bread slice. So you will identify some organisms which are very small in size. So we call such small, such microorganisms as microorganisms. And the lesson is about friend and foe. Is these organisms helpful or harmful to us? Either ways, microorganisms are helpful to us in some way. And sometimes they may cause dangerous, dreadful diseases and many other problems even. So these things we are going to discuss in this chapter, microorganisms. Now let us look at the different categories of microorganisms. Viruses bacteria, fungi, protozoa. So in this, certain microorganisms can be seen with the help of a magnifying glass. That means a hand lens. You can use a hand lens to see. Which one you can see here? Fungi. Certain kind of fungi can be seen with the help of a magnifying glass or a hand lens or with a simple microscope. But certain microorganisms can be seen only with the help of a compound microscope. You need compound microscope to see bacteria and protozoa. You cannot see them with the help of a hand lens, just like as like a fungi. But there are certain organisms which are still microscopic, which you cannot see with the help of a compound microscope. Those are the viruses. Viruses are very, very small which you cannot see with the help of even with a compound microscope. Then what do you need? You need a special microscope called electron microscope to see the virus. Now let us discuss some important points about these four categories of microorganisms. If you see the viruses, as I told you, they are very, very small, very microscopic. We need electron microscope to see them. And viruses, they cause many diseases, like they cause chicken pox and a common flu, viral fevers and all these kind of viral infections, polio. Polio is caused by a virus. So many of the diseases caused by these viruses cannot be cured. Prevention is the only way to control the viral diseases, like chicken pox, flu and polio. These are all caused by viruses. So viruses, when they are outside, in the outside environment, just they are like a dust particle. They cannot carry out any metabolism. They cannot carry out any activity. They are not considered as living. But when these microorganisms enter into a cell, living cell, then they become active. Then they use the apparatus of the host cell and they produce large number and they cause diseases. So that is about viruses. Now let us go to the bacteria. Bacteria. Even bacteria also cause diseases like tuberculosis, typhoid. So these kind of diseases are caused by the bacteria. 
TB, tuberculosis and typhoid and bacteria, they spread through water or by air or by different insects and they cause diseases. So bacteria are comparatively bigger compared to viruses. And the next one is fungi. So in this fungi, yeast is the unicellular fungus and molds. Molds are found on the rotten food. We discussed that the moist bread slice, if it is left undisturbed in a warm place for some time, we find that certain growth is found on the bread slice, that is mold. So mold and yeast are the fungus and many of the fungus also cause certain skin diseases and many other problems. Now see the protozoa. The protozoans are the microorganisms, even they also cause diseases. They cause the diseases like malaria. Malaria is caused by a protozoa and elephantiasis. Elephantiasis is caused by protozoan. So they cause different diseases. Protozoans are much bigger compared to this bacteria. So these are the different microorganisms. Now let us see where do we find these microorganisms? Where do they live? Where do we find microorganisms? Microorganisms are omnipresent. Omnipresent. What does this mean? Omnipresent. They are present everywhere. Microorganisms, they can live on land. They can live in water. They can live in other organisms. See, different plants and animals. So all the plants and animals, they are carrying so many microorganisms with them. Even including you, in your gut, in your digestive system, millions of microorganisms are existing. They are living. That is their habitat, means the place which where, where they live. So microorganisms are there even on our bodies. Microorganisms are found in different varied climatic conditions. Certain microorganisms, they can live even in hot springs where the temperature is very high, more than 50 degrees centigrade cell, that temperature. So certain microorganisms can withstand the temperature. Certain microorganisms, basically, we know that microorganisms cannot resist heat and uh, salinity, that is salt and that is a very cooling temperature. But my, there are certain microorganisms which can withstand very high temperature. Microorganisms can live in hot springs, more than 50 degrees Celsius temperature they can live. Certain microorganisms, they live in very cold climatic conditions, icy areas. In ice mountains, certain microorganisms, they are able to live. Certain microorganisms are able to live in very salty conditions. So, they, they can live either in extreme hot, extreme cold and extreme saline conditions, salty conditions. So they can present at any of the environment. So that is the place where they live. Certain microorganisms, they live with other organisms. They cannot live individually. Certain microorganisms, they can live individually. Again, some organisms, they live in colonies. Say for example, you see fungi, they live in colony, yeast colony. If you see amoeba, amoeba is an individual organism. It doesn't live in colony. Individually it lives, separately it lives in the water. So microorganisms, they live individually or they live in groups as colonies. Certain microorganisms, they, live in the, they can live in the environment. Certain microorganisms, they live only in the other organisms, either on the plants or either on the animals, including human beings. So these are the places where the microorganisms can live. Now let us see the microorganisms and their relation with us. So here we are maintaining a friendly relation as well as there is certain harm with microorganisms. When we are discussing about diseases, especially infectious diseases, these are caused by microorganisms. Diseases like typhoid, cholera, tuberculosis, malaria, polio, chickenpox, HIV, AIDS. So these kind of diseases are caused by microorganisms. 
and some of these diseases do not have cure and leads to death. On the other side, there are certain organisms which help us a lot. They take part in our development. They take part in our progress. They serve so many things for our daily needs or daily requirements. Even starting from our kitchen, in the processing of our food, these microorganisms help us a lot. You know, we use curd in our daily food. Especially the curds are used in uh, different kind of dishes and curd alone is taken as a buttermilk and curd is taken with rice which contain lot of vitamins and uh, rich source of vitamins and very good, uh, very good product, very good food item which will detoxify different kind of toxins in our body. So, such kind of material, the curd, is prepared in our houses with the help of microorganisms. So you might be knowing the procedure how curd is made at home. So that is done by warm milk, warm milk plus a little sample of curd which contain bacteria. So the sample of curd already contains bacteria. So we are adding bacteria to the warm milk. And it is covered and kept aside for some time, some 4 hours or 5 hours. So the milk turns to curd. So this is how the microorganisms help in preparing the curd. So they are making the milk into curd. And even in our, in our house, different kind of uh, tiffins are made. Breakfast idli dosa so while making this idli and dosa the batter is prepared so in the batter naturally certain yeast will grow so this yeast makes the batter little sour which gives the sour and sweet taste to the batter and it also makes the batter fluffy so you can find small bubbles coming out of the batter air bubbles so these air pockets or air bubbles are created by this yeast. Yeast is also used in making bread, in making cakes. So the bread, if you see the bread, it appears like a sponge with pockets. So how these pockets are formed? These pockets are formed by the carbon dioxide gas released by the yeast, which is mixed in the batter of the bread. While preparing the bread, they mix the batter and they add some yeast to that. So this yeast, it makes the batter fluffy, spongy. So you get the spongy texture, so soft to eat. So that is brought up by the yeast. So this way, right from the kitchen, beginning with the kitchen, they help us in so many ways. Microorganisms, they decompose the dead and decaying organic matter. The dead bodies of plants and animals, if there are no microorganisms, the whole planet would be filled with all dead bodies. But there are no dead bodies. What happens to the dead bodies? If any animal is died, it is buried in the soil. But after a few days, what happens to the body? The body mixes up with the soil. Who does that job? Microorganisms. So microorganisms, they decay the dead bodies and they help in mixing the dead body with the soil. Plants, they shed their leaves. Wood, it get rotten and mixed up with soil. It's all the decomposition process is done by the microorganisms. So the microorganisms, they help in cleaning the environment. They help in removing all the dead and debris and mixing it up with the soil. At the same time, in this process, they are improving the fertility of this soil. Fertility of this soil is improved by microorganisms. So these are the general uses, natural uses. But there are so many scientists who found some more advanced uses, applications with microorganisms. 
So the study of microorganisms is called microbiology. People who study microbiology are called as microbiologists. So in 1900, so many microbiologists, they started using the microorganisms for commercial production of different things. What is commercial production? You are making curd in your house for your purpose. That is domestic use. But if you wanted to use microorganisms to prepare something and sell it to the whole world, it is on the commercial scale. Now let us see the commercial use of microorganisms. So now let us see the commercial use of microorganisms. So I told you that the commercial use means production of certain products in a large scale for sale throughout the world. So that is the commercial production. So what are those products that can be manufactured with the help of microorganisms? Here, the most important one is alcohol. And the second one is acetic acid. Acetic acid, in general terms, it is called as vinegar. Vinegar and wine. So these are produced with the help of the microorganisms. So alcohol is produced, alcohol is used in different uh, purposes. Alcohol is used in the chemistry laboratories for different experiments. Alcohol is used in industries. It is used as a solvent of many chemicals. Certain chemicals do not, do not dissolve in water, they dissolve in alcohol. So in many industries, they need alcohol as a solvent. And even in the manufacture of medicines, alcohol is required. So alcohol can be chemically prepared, which is very costly. But if alcohol is prepared with the help of microorganisms, it is economical. That means in low cost, we can produce alcohol. So that is one of the commercial use of microorganism is production of alcohol. The alcohol is also used to make alcoholic beverages. Alcoholic beverages like whiskey, brandy, these kind of beverages which are consumed by the people which have got good commercial value. So the next one is acetic acid or vinegar. You all know vinegar. This is used in your kitchens. You can ask your mother to show vinegar. They use this vinegar while cooking certain Chinese cuisine, Chinese items like noodles or fried rice. They use vinegar, which is sour in taste. So that is also prepared with the help of microorganisms and wine. Wine is also a beverage. So this is also prepared using microorganisms. Which microorganism is specially used to produce alcohol or vinegar? That is yeast. Yeast is a kind of fungus. The yeast is used to produce alcohol. Okay, what is the raw material there? Yeast is used there. On what it is used? Yeast is used in natural sugars. Certain natural sugars will be taken natural sugars so when the yeast is added to the natural sugars what are the natural sugars like barley wheat these kind of grains and crushed fruits fruit juices so these contain the natural sugars certain cereals like barley and wheat maize they contain the natural sugars so these grains are soaked in are made are soaked and in that yeast is added so the yeast it acts on the simple sugars of these products and it convert the simple sugars simple sugars to alcohol who is doing that yeast and this process is called as fermentation so fermentation is the process in which the simple sugars are converted to alcohol. It is called as fermentation. So by this fermentation, commercially on a large scale, products like alcohol, acetic acid and wine are produced. Medicinal use of microorganisms. So we learned that microorganisms cause diseases. But here, we can make use of microorganisms in controlling diseases. Yes, there are certain materials found in microorganisms. 
extracted from microorganisms which are used as medicine to cure other disease such medicines are called as antibiotics antibiotics so what are antibiotics antibiotics are the medicines which are sourced from microorganisms especially fungi and bacteria fungi and bacteria Alexander Fleming he found a fungus Penicillium notatum which is killing the bacteria disease causing bacteria and from that with the help of his friend he extracted penicillin 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 so this penicillin it was a wonderful antibiotic during world war 2 so it saved so many lives so likewise there are other antibiotics like streptomycin tetracycline erythromycin So these are the antibiotics like examples of antibiotics streptomycin tetracycline erythromycin penicillin so all these are the antibiotics which are made from the compounds extracted from the microorganisms these are used to cure so many diseases these antibiotics are used to treat so many infections so this is the medicinal use of microorganisms certain antibiotics antibiotics not only used for humans and not only to protect human health even for animals even you see in the commercial use of uh, antibiotics certain animals are grown in large scale animal husbandry livestock poultry so cattle when the cattle are reared the antibiotics are given to the cattle so by that they will be free from the diseases and they give good production good milk and good meat at the same time poultry so the poultry birds are fed with the antibiotics the antibiotics they mix in the feed so by that if there are any diseases those diseases will be cured and the animal will be healthy in such a way commercially we are using these antibiotics which are produced with the help of micro organisms so this is one of the medicinal use now we are going to talk about the another side another use of the another way of using micro organisms to control the disease that is vaccines now let us see the other use of microorganisms other medicinal use that is vaccines one is antibiotics we discussed that antibiotics are directly used as a medicine to cure the disease but certain diseases caused by virus cannot be cured by medicine in such cases there is an alternate method which was found by edward jenner the process of vaccination So in this method these vaccines help to prevent so many diseases they help in prevention not the cure that means not after happening the disease before happening the disease it gives us some protection the vaccines they see that we are not infected by diseases so that is the prevention so as a preventive measure children are given vaccines you see the newborn babies from the day 1 of their birth vaccines are given on the day one there is some vaccine on seventh day there is some vaccine on 15th day there is some vaccine after one month there is some vaccine after three months there is some vaccine for six months for 12 months for two years for five years there are vaccines given for different diseases like smallpox chickenpox measles hepatitis tuberculosis cholera for all these kind of diseases vaccines are available today if these vaccines are given to the children in future they do not get these diseases even though the microorganisms enter their body their bodies will have resistance to the diseases and they are not infected so how these vaccines work to understand how these vaccines work let us see the natural mechanism of our body if any foreign particle or microorganisms enter our body 
foreign particular micro organisms may easily enter our body because you are eating your food where you are eating your food in open air you are sitting and eating your food while eating your food the air may carry so many micro organisms into your plate so you are eating micro organisms you are breathing the air the air may contain so many micro organisms can you assure that your air doesn't contain any micro organisms no there is a chance of micro organisms present in the air around us so we are inhaling micro organisms we are eating micro organisms we are drinking water of course you may be drinking purified drinking water but even then sometimes it happens to drink water from outside or some other house relatives house unpurified water so through the water the micro organisms may enter so there are so many ways by which micro organisms enter our body but always we are not getting diseases why because our body has got natural defense mechanism by which we are protected always but sometimes it fails then we get the disease so in our body there is a mechanism which produce some special fighters called as antibodies anything that comes from outside any microorganism or dust particle or virus or whatsoever anything that comes from outside to our body is called as antigen when antigen enters our body antibodies are produced naturally these antibodies they bind with antigens and they stop their action so antigens become inactive they cannot cause diseases this is the way how our body is protected by the natural immune system which is which we are having in our bodies so where is the fault if our body is well equipped with a defense mechanism to fight against the antigens then why do we fall ill how do we get diseases so we have seen how our body fight against the antigens or microorganisms or the foreign particles now we are talking about vaccine how this vaccine helps us vaccines are nothing but the dead are weakened made weak attenuated microbes they are injected into our bodies they are sent into our bodies so these are the microorganisms our body will produce antibodies but how are these microorganisms they are dead and they are very weak so they cannot cause disease as they are very weak but our body starts produce antibodies to that microorganism this means the vaccine will make our body learn what kind of antibodies are to be produced if the microorganism naturally or really enters our body so this is a artificial practice application a doctor is giving a vaccine doctor is giving the dead microorganisms our body it anticipates it is a microorganism and produces antibodies so whatever the antibodies that are produced they will remain in our body for a very long period sometimes throughout our life so on the second instance if really the microorganism enters our body our body already consist of antibodies which are produced by the vaccine so these antibodies they fight with the antigen and they stop the disease so in that way the disease is prevented so in that way the vaccines they help to prevent many of the diseases which do not have cure so for many diseases there is no cure means certain diseases cannot be cured with antibiotics but if vaccination is done we can be protected from many diseases so that is the reason why all the small children are vaccinated the government it conducts campaigns pulse polio campaign all the children below the age of 5 years please bring your children for pulse polio drops oral polio vaccine that is the polio drops are given through mouth in the same way in anganwadi centers in government hospitals every time timely periodically for all the small children from the age of 0 days first day to 3 years there are so many vaccines are scheduled at first month third month sixth month eighth month likewise for diseases like tetanus uh, diseases like hepatitis typhoid cholera dysentery mumps measles polio for all these kind of diseases the vaccines are given so because of this vaccination 
many parts of the world is free from diseases like smallpox and chickenpox and many parts of the world is free from polio earlier there were so many people they used to suffer from these diseases like polio and all polio is a viral disease which will affect the nerves so what happens is that uh, they get paralyzed they're not able to walk so such kind of things happen in case of diseases like polio which do not have a permanent cure so such kind of dangerous diseases can be prevented by the application of vaccines so the medical application or medical use of microorganisms is two one is vaccine the other one is antibiotics so now let us see other uses of microorganisms increasing soil fertility soil fertility is increased by certain microorganisms like blue green algae algae cyanobacteria nitrogen fixing bacteria what does they do soil fertility how do we say that the soil is fertile the soil is not fertile when the soil contain good amount of nitrogenous compounds you say the soil is fertile that is the reason farmers add urea ammonia this kind of uh, things to the soil which are helpful for the growth of plants so nitrogen is available in the air air contains 71 78% of nitrogen but plants cannot absorb this nitrogen directly then how do the plants get the nitrogen plants get the nitrogen in the form of nitrogen salts from the soil but where is the nitrogen it is in the air then how do it reach the soil the soil consists of certain bacteria like cyanobacteria which will fix the atmospheric nitrogen to soil nitrogen these bacteria are converting the nitrogen in the air to the nitrogenous compounds of the soil see how much work which others cannot do how in other way it is not possible manually you cannot do that there it's only possible by that particular creature the microorganisms so we can appreciate the unique feature of the microorganisms converting the atmospheric nitrogen into soil nitrogen in the form of nitrogenous compounds so without that by bacteria the nitrogen cannot be converted to nitrogenous compounds of course there is some other method called uh, like lightening when lightening happens it is a physical method when lightening happens when there is a lot of electricity is passed in the air from the clouds to soil in such cases also atmospheric nitrogen is fixed but it is very limited because it happens at times not always but this nitrogen fixing bacteria so they are doing a great job of converting the atmospheric nitrogen into soil nitrogenous compounds which are very helpful for the growth of plants so in this way bacteria help in increasing the fertility of the soil bacteria they decompose the dead and decaying matter so in this decomposition process they are doing two things one they are making the soil fertile second thing they are cleaning the environment decomposition decomposition what is this decomposition in nature there are so many things which are made up of materials a material is made up of so many compounds if all these compounds are broken into individual elements if they are broken down you call it as decomposition this decomposition is done by bacteria and other microorganisms so this decomposition it helps in two ways one cleaning the environment increasing the fertility of soil there is an animal dead body one animal died so that animal is buried in the soil if the a dead animal it is not decomposed it is a waste just it is a heap of flesh staying on the ground it is a disturbance it causes diseases in the environment in the locality in the community the dead body has to be decomposed otherwise it causes problems so the decomposition is done by the microorganisms so when the dead body is decomposed when the flesh bones skin of that animal is converted into some other elements like certain gases 
and certain compounds and these compounds they mix up with the soil then the fertility of the soil increases we are throwing lot of waste every day you see lot of waste is produced in your kitchen when your mother cooks food you see the peels of vegetables peels of fruits seeds of vegetables so all this waste and leftover food everything is a lot of waste and you will get some other kind of waste in your house packing material you will order something online you will get a package you will open the package and you take your item and all the carton the cardboard and the polythene cover everything you throw in the dustbin and you buy some cool drink or some other juice packets or whatsoever you drink the juice packets and those packets and you take uh, you buy milk and after taking the milk from the packet you throw the covers plastic covers in the dustbin so you are producing a lot of waste every day but the waste is of two kinds one is organic organic waste this includes fruit and vegetable waste or food which can be decomposed or degradable and there is some other kind of waste non biodegradable non biodegradable this is biodegradable so all the biodegradable waste is decomposed by the microorganisms the fruit peels the banana peels the vegetable peels the leftover food if everything is thrown outside you will get smell stinky smell flies so by the germs so by the diseases but what happens whatever the biodegradable waste like food waste or fruits or vegetables or whatsoever cloth and paper they are decomposed by the microorganisms and so by that the environment is kept clean of course microorganisms cannot degrade or decompose certain materials like plastic glass and certain metals like aluminum cans and these kind of things so these things are a very big nuisance and a problem to the environment because as they are not degraded or decomposed by microorganisms they are left in the soil for a very long period all the plastic covers and all but whereas the remaining organic matter or biodegradable materials are degraded by the decomposed by the microorganisms so in this way in all these ways the microorganisms are helping us a lot now we will see what are the harmful effects of microorganisms so far we discussed the benefits or the uses of microorganisms now let us see what are the harmful effects of the microorganisms